Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Westside Baptist Church parking lot service. So glad you could be here today on this beautiful February afternoon. Uh, it's supposed to be up in the 50s today. And I don't see a cloud anywhere. A gorgeous day. Great day to know the Lord and be in the Lord's army. Amen. So today we're looking at, at spiritual gifts. Still in the series on spiritual gifts. We believe there are 19 gifts and we've divided them into three different categories. One is serving gifts. Second one is speaking gifts. And the third one, sign gifts. Today we're still in the serving gifts. So far we've been able to cover the gift of helps, the built-in need detector where people have that and they can see a need and, and of course get involved in it and, and help with needs within God's uh, body, within the body of Christ. And also we covered the gift of leadership, helmsmanship, being able to lead and uh, organize and plan and, and see a project come together to the glory of God. Today we're looking at the gift of mercy, the gift of mercy. You'll find this gift in Romans chapter 12 and verse 8. That's Romans 12 and verse 8. Now this gift is unique probably more than any other gift. And the reason it's unique is, is the fact that this involves feelings, our, our feelings more than any other gift. So we look at the gift of, uh, the, the gift of, uh, the Bible says mercy, the gift of mercy. It says, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, first of all, what is the gift of mercy? What is the gift of mercy? First of all, it's God-given. Each of these gifts are known as grace gifts, the Bible tells us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 calls them grace gifts. They're by the grace of God. It's nothing we generate within ourselves. It's nothing that we choose to do. Nothing like that whatsoever. It is not a talent, although talents are God-given. This is a gift from God. Now, the moment you're saved, God the Holy Spirit moves within your body as a believer, and your body becomes his temple. When the Spirit of God moves within his temple, guess what happens? He brings with him at least one spiritual gift. One spiritual gift. Perhaps others to support that one gift. You may have several of them. But, but the fact is, if you're God's child, you're a gifted child. So we see, what is this gift? Well, it's God-given. It involves compassion. Compassion. Well, what is compassion? It's more than just sympathy. It may involve sympathy, but compassion means with strength. Somebody that comes alongside with strength to help you. And of course, uh, in the world we live in today, this gift is so needed. It's needed in such a, a, a bad and a glowing way. Uh, you can't go anywhere without seeing somebody that needs some mercy in their life. A lot of hurting people around. Now, the people with the gift of mercy are going to be colorblind. What do I mean by that? No racial barriers. No economic barriers. No educational barriers. You see people that are hurting, and they want to help people that are hurting. And the thing about this gift, people with the gift of mercy can help other people with cheerfulness. They don't look at it as a drudgery or something that they're com just compelled to do out of out of a, a duty or necessity, it is something they get a great deal of joy from, is ministering to others with the gift of mercy in a way that they get joy. They can do it cheerfully. That's what the gift of mercy is all about. Now, who do we see with the gift of mercy in the Bible? Who do we see? Well, I thought about it, prayed about it. I came up with at least one. Maybe the best example of all I find in Luke chapter 10. That is Luke chapter 10. We see somebody with the gift of mercy. The Bible says a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers. And they stripped him and beat him and went away leaving him half dead. And by chance a priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite also when he came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion. And again, compassion is with strength. If you're compassionate, that means you come alongside somebody with strength. It's more than just sympathy, although it may involve sympathy. 
And it came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own beast, and when he brought him to an end, and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell uh, to the robber's hands? And he said, being the lawyer, and he said, the one who showed mercy toward him, Jesus said to him, go and do the same. Now the lawyer had a question, wanted to entrap Jesus. The lawyer wanted to try to uh, clarify and try to limit who his neighbor was. He wanted to limit who that he should be helping. But, you know, Jesus in this great story of the Good Samaritan, uh, he outlines what it is to be somebody with the gift of mercy. Somebody that comes alongside with compassion. Now, what did the man do? Well, he fell among thieves. Very common in that day. But the Good Samaritan, not like the religious leaders. You know, sometimes religion can insulate you from the needs of people. The priest and the Levite passed by on the other side, but that Samaritan was moved with compassion to the point that it cost him something. He was willing to pay the price. First of all, it cost him some time. It cost him some emotion. There's some drain that goes with that when you really care for somebody and help them. It drains your batteries a little bit. It cost him also some money, two denarii. Uh, but notice here, this man was moved with compassion, and we have the gift of mercy, outlined very well in the Word of God. Second of all, we see the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says in Matthew 9.36 and Matthew 14.14, 14, Jesus was moved with compassion. Today we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a compassionate one. He cares for you today. He loves you, he knows you, and he cares for you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the pain is, no matter what the hurt is, no matter the loss in your life, I want to tell you about Jesus that loves you, that cares about you. He is moved with compassion. He's not some hard-hearted God that goes around hating everybody. The Jesus of the Bible loves all people to the point he was willing to die on the cross of Calvary to pay your way into heaven. Dear friends, that is love. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay his life down for his friends. You are the one today he laid his life down for. He loves you that much today. He died on the cross to pay for your sins. Today, Jesus is the one with the greatest gift of mercy of all because he laid his life down. The Bible says for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loves the whole world today, not just a certain race, not just a certain age bracket, economic bracket, not, not just a certain educational level. He loves all people the same. He cares for all. Jesus, the Bible says, died for all. Jesus died once for all for anybody that would lay down sin and come to him in saving knowledge. That's who we see with the gift in the Bible. Now then, this is a perfect gift. Why is that, Pastor? Because this gift comes from a perfect God. But then how can this gift be a problem in somebody's life? Well, because this perfect gift is given to imperfect people. Imperfect people. Now, people with this gift, I want to give you some things to watch in your life. Maybe building a support team around you. Because with the gift of mercy, it will drain you quickly unless you have a good support group, especially the Lord Jesus Christ, Bible study and prayer. Because people with the gift of mercy, their batteries run low in a hurry because they're such a giving group of people. Feelings are involved uh, immensely when you have the gift of mercy. And people that uh, have this gift are prone to be depressed. They're prone to get depressed. And that happens. So today, if you have the gift of mercy, thank God for you. Thank God for you. Use that gift to the glory of God with cheerfulness. But at the same time, realize you're prone to depression. Make sure you have a good support group around you to help you as you deal with people. And the thing about it, if that depression goes unchecked in your life, if you don't deal with it in a godly sort of way, you'll become pessimistic. Next thing you know, you'll be negative. You, you, you'll be uh, criticizing others. 
And that's what you run into in your life if you don't deal with that uh, depression. Now the thing is, people with the gift of mercy, they have a built-in hurt detector. People with the gift of helps have a built-in need detector. There's a need around, they just fill right in to help with that need. People with the gift of mercy have a built-in hurt detector. You come upon a person, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. That's good enough for most people. You can fool a lot of people with something like that. So just put on a saccharine grin and say, well, everything's fine. But you know what? People with the gift of mercy, they see right through that. Everything's fine, huh? Well, let's talk about this a little bit. But the thing is, they have a built-in hurt detector. They just kind of hone in on people that are hurting. So therefore, we need to be careful if we have this gift. Once again, make sure you have a good support team around you. Guard against depression and anxiety and discouragement because we live in a fallen world filled with all sorts of uh, issues, family problems, pandemic issues, you name it, we're seeing it in the generation we're living in. Oh, how this gift is needed today. But be, be careful, be careful that you don't, uh, you don't try to do it on your own. Make sure you have good support as you do this. And then be careful also that you're not critical of others. People with the gift of mercy, if you're not careful, you'll judge other people that don't have the gift to the extent that you have it. And you start, well, are you hard-hearted so-and-so? Didn't you see they had this need? And you can become critical and judgmental on others. You mean well, but you know what? Yeah, you're wrong if you're critical of others that, uh, that don't have the gift. God has put you in the body of Christ to hone in on that need. You have the built-in need detector, and you may have to get a committee or a group around you. Don't have to be a, have a title, you know. But the thing is, uh, you need to have others around you to work with you on this. So how can it be a problem? A perfect gift given to imperfect people. Now, how do we see this modern application? It's still around today. This gift is greatly needed, as I've told you. It is still around today. Now, how do you know if you have the, the gift of, of mercy? Who do you know that has the gift of mercy? Well, whenever there's a crisis, listen, whenever there's a crisis, this watch who shows up. Whenever there's a crisis, watch who shows up. There's a group of men, men and women in Ohio, the disaster relief team. And you know what? When something happens, they travel all over the United States. Something like that happens, you know what? I can rest assured. I'm going to turn this so the wind isn't as bad. Uh, you can rest assured they're on the scene and they're working. People with the gift of mercy, they want to help people. It may, may include sawing up a tree, bringing some fresh water, so some toiletry items, things like that. But people show up. Just watch when there's a disaster. People with the gift of mercy will show up and be involved in helping with those sorts of things. Now, Nurses, many of them, most of them, I personally believe, have a gift of mercy. One old pastor I, I went to visit in the hospital one time, he said, my nurse doesn't have the gift of mercy. <laughs> she has the head knowledge. She can do this, she can do that, but you know what? She's not getting any joy from it, and I'm not either. <laughs> but he, he was struggling with that, you see. Uh, he had, Praise God that when you go to the hospital, whatever, you, you, get a, you, you get a nurse with a gift of mercy. And you can certainly feel it if they have it, and <laughs> you'll know it if they don't have it as well. And dealing with many, many people, many people, through, and working through bereavement in their life, going through the, uh, the stages of grief, and working with people up close and personal when they have a loved one that's not far from the kingdom of heaven they don't have long to be around there's a gifted group of people out there called hospice people hospice people and the ones that I've known personally have the gift of mercy they're just able to come in and support the quality of life of that individual until God calls them home they're able to make that person comfortable. You'll see them usually with a smile on their face and they're serving and giving and, and helping the family. They don't just minister to the individual, they're ministering to the entire family. Thank God for people today like that that have the gift of mercy. It's always been needed. Here it is in the early church 
and how much more today in the world that we're living in. So many in the world today have some open spots around the dinner table. People used to sit there, but COVID got them. Or complications from it got them. You know how they need people with the gift of mercy to step in. Today with the family under assault, I mean the traditional family is uh, lined out in the Bible. It's under fire. We know that. Uh, it's obvious today. Families falling apart. Marriage is falling apart. People needing ministered to. People with the gift of mercy. Oh, how you're needed today. Use that gift. Some today have the gift, but perhaps they got depressed and they fell out. Maybe anxiety took over their life. And they need just to be ministered to themselves. Don't run from people that are trying to help you. People that love you. That want to reach out to you with arms of love. With scripture and with prayer. Maybe perhaps with music. Whatever it takes. Because God needs you back in his army. He needs you back in the local church doing what God's called you to do. That gift of mercy. People need it today. The greatest need today, however, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe you've heard the, me the message today and you realize, I'm not a Christian. If I was to die right now, I am not certain about where I would spend eternity. You know the Bible lays it out so clearly that even a child can understand it. You see, you can know for a fact, the Bible says in 1 John, that you can know that you're saved. You can know it without any doubt, but you, with great confidence. If you don't have that today, I'm going to lead you in a simple sinner's prayer. And I want you to follow me in this prayer. Again, saying a few words, reciting words won't save you, but they connect you to the God that will save you if you're sincere about it. So bow with me at this time. Repeat after me. Dear God, today I realize I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, that he was buried on the third day he arose. And right now, Father, I want to make a commitment to you. I want to turn from sin and turn to Jesus. Please send Jesus to come and live in my life, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I'll do my best to follow him all the days of my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Save my soul. Be my Lord and Savior. Come in. Thank you, God, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I want to thank you today for being here with us. And if you prayed the sinner's prayer with me, give me a call. Text me. You can email me. 513-265-5051. I love to answer some questions for you, if you have some. I love to send you some good materials to help you grow up to be a great disciple in the King's Army. So please contact me. You guys have a great day. Look forward to next week as we continue our sermon series on spiritual gifts. God bless.